All right, my peoples, on a day. All right, we're going to talk about this video. Now, uh, there's uh, a video that I want to talk to you guys about, uh, which is similar to the types of video that we're starting to see with people that live in Ghana, you know, black American immigrants who live in Ghana. And those who are brave enough to voice the type of concerns they, they have regarding their own people who are behaving badly in Ghana. I want to bring to you guys a video or a clip from a video from a beautiful black American sister who answered. She was one of many who answered the call, the year of the return call in 2019, um, who went over there. And from what I can gather from this sister, she is one of a few African Americans who went there with the right intention. Because you can tell the pain that she has when discussing the the uh, 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 or how upset she is regarding her own people, okay? African Americans who are in Ghana behaving badly. I want you to hear what she says regarding this because we started to see these videos come out. Okay? And I want to have another discussion on this because I just released one yesterday regarding a with a from a Ghanaian brother who says the same thing that she's saying. But I want you now to hear it now from an African American sister living in Ghana and hear how she puts it and her frustration with the bad behavior from African Americans who are who've moved to Ghana and are living in Ghana. Take a look at this. So today we are going to be talking about an arising situation happening here in Ghana where more and more um, people from the diaspora are coming here and just causing issues, okay? Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's even getting to the point like Kimberly and I have um, been discussing off camera is how the more and more people from the diaspora are coming here causing more conflict, causing more harm than good. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean, and it's to the point where I believe when I walk into government offices, immediately they don't accept me well. And I think it's because they think we're all like that. They mm -hmm. think we all come over here privileged with this self sense, sense of, a sense of entitlement. Uh -huh. um, I witnessed this lady getting, African-American lady getting her house. She moved into a brand, we together moved into a brand new house mm -hmm. for the first people in the house. Mm -hmm. And the workers came and she talked so nasty to them. The housekeeper had just mopped the floor and the workers don't know they're coming in. They really don't even speak the language. She was like, freshly mop, fresh mop, fresh mop, fresh mop. I said, Melissa, they don't know your floor is freshly mopped. Can you just say, excuse me, my floor is freshly mopped. You're, you're talking at them. Mm -hmm. Fresh mop, mm -hmm. fresh mop, fresh mop. Mm -hmm. Then they needed to stand in a chair and put a bub up. They took her chair. She said, oh my God, why would you stand in my chair? You didn't come prepared. You didn't bring a ladder. You're just standing in my chair. It's okay. You think it's okay to do that? Just go, 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 go. Don't bring them back. They won't be using my restaurant when they come back. They better shh outside somewhere and i was just like whoa right i eventually had to snap on her myself mm -hmm. and after i finished because she would poke at me and my husband a lot as well mm -hmm. once i snapped on her because i just couldn't take it no more i packed my stuff sat outside the gate and called the driver to come get me right didn't go back end of the story the mm -hmm. end for me i don't know about you know and i'm pretty sure there's other people who probably have similar stories but for me i'm noticing this trend of bad behavior is coming from people who are specifically coming from america mm -hmm. i don't know if your experience mm -hmm. with this particular person yes. you're referring to is from america yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. so i've i've noticed that all of the encounters that i have had um that has been in a negative light has been encounters with other Americans. And my thing is, is that if you have that mentality and you have that perception and you're not coming to Ghana with the intention of adding value, adding mm -hmm. substance to being here in Ghana, then why are you coming? Exactly. Oh, okay. come to Ghana looking for the U.S. Right. I came to oh, Ghana thank you for saying to that. Embrace the culture and the continent and this this country. Mm -hmm. I didn't come to Ghana looking for the U.S. Right. And so 
that's what a lot of people do. When you hear all the complaints of that you don't have this and you don't have that, did you do any type of studying before you got here? Mm -hmm. Did you think you've seen growing up as children, we all seen how they portray Africa. They Absolutely. don't even say country. They just call it all Africa. Mm -hmm. Africa has this, they're poor, they're dusty, they're dirty, they're this. So you come into the continent you should have already had some type of vision in your head that this is not like the U.S. So why do right. you get here and expect to see the U.S. over right, here? Right, right, exactly. And and why, even if you are looking for the U.S., right, why are you coming to Ghana? Why are you coming to Africa? If the U.S. is what you want, then you should stay exactly. in the U.S. because you're exactly. going to get whatever it is you're looking for. Exactly. And I feel like we're coming to a point where... Um, the government of Ghana has to stand up. They're going to have to take a stance. They're going to have to do something about this because if Ghana, if Ghana is not careful enough, they're going to find a situation where Ghana is going to be out of control because it is going to be an uproar. It's going to be so much confusion. It's going to be so many of the locals who are going to find themselves in unhappy situations and circumstances because of this negative energy that certain people from the diaspora is bringing here to the mm -hmm. continent and it's just not fair mm -hmm. it's not fair to the people who are already here residing who have been born and raised um in this you know country they have worked even harder than the people that is coming over here so my thing is how dare you how dare you how dare you come over here and disrespect a land that you was never even born and raised yes. in Yes. So for them to extend that olive branch to even invite you back home to even come and say, you know, come, we welcome in you with open arms. And mm -hmm. then you get over here and excuse my language, but show your natural ASS. Yes, yes, yeah, true. It's true. I've had people on my video that say, um, what type of ghetto are you driving through? It's ugly, it's dirty, it's dusty. Do they even have paved roads? And when you say people, are you referring to... Um, People from Americans. the diaspora that's mm -hmm. here? Um, no, no, Americans on my TikTok. Oh, okay, okay, just commented, media. okay. So okay. I, if it's not your cup of tea, you don't have to worry about ever coming here. Mm -hmm. If it's not your cup of tea, you don't even have to be here. So, it, you know, I can understand people being in the diaspora commenting the way they have because, mm -hmm. you know, they're there in America for a reason. But my thing is, is those ones that are taking the initiative to travel from wherever their various places to come to the continent and then misbehave the way that they are. It's like, what is your point? What is your purpose? Mm -hmm. Why don't you just stay where you are? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk about this. You know, the first thing I'm going to say regarding that sister and is that I don't like that she was just using the word diaspora. Okay? I don't like that she was using that because this is not just diaspora doing this. These are African Americans. And we know what she was saying. She, we know who she was talking about. She was talking about her own people, African Americans. So she needed to use that phrase. That would have been, that's my only feedback to her, is that you need to call a spade a spade. These are not anyone in the diaspora. These are African Americans or black Americans that are behaving this way. So that's about the only feedback that I have for her. But nonetheless, she made quite a lot of great points that I want to talk about. Okay, that I want to dissect because we're seeing these types of things play out where people from this country, where they know they, can't, they will never do in this country, they're going to Africa, the likes of Tanzania, the likes of the Gambia, now Ghana, right, to, to, to behave really badly. They're taking a lot of their, their uh, ill intent. They're bad behaviors that most people in any country would not tolerate. They go over there. And in this situation, you heard that older lady that she was interviewing talk about the way these people talk down to the Africans, to the Ghanaians, very disrespectfully. She gave you that story where she's witnessed someone, okay, an African-American woman, talk down disrespectfully at the Ghanaian locals. The exact same tone and mannerism that many African Americans and their descendants, all their ancestors, the same behavior they felt and they were treated by white Europeans who talked to them like animals, who talked down at them. Now they're going to Africa and doing the same thing to people that look like them and worse to a country who invited them over to their country. Is that Behavior where we all know that the abused has not become the abuser. 
So people who know what it's like to go through being objectified, to go through being mislabeled, to go through being subjected to inhumane type of torture or behavior or treatment, are now exerting that same thing at their own African brothers and sisters, worse, in their own country. <laughs> what I tell you? <laughs> what I tell you? There's nothing worse or disrespectful than that. To find a foreigner in your own country, right? Talk down on you in your own house. To find a foreigner who isn't paying taxes, talk down at you in your own house. To find a foreigner, come to your own country, not contribute value to your country, but bring bad behavior to your country and have the audacity to talk to you any kind of way at your own house. <laughs> and so this is the type of thing that Ghana and Ghanaians have really inherited and attracted and, and invited to their country. You heard that sister say, how dare you? You could tell her frustration. How dare you come here and bring all the bad things from America to this country? Then why don't you stay in America? Why don't you stay there? No. Do you know why they didn't stay in America? Because these are the ones, again, let me, let me remind you that I talked about this extensively. I talked about this extensively because I researched this whole thing. It took me years to research this. The African Americans or Black Americans who went to Ghana, right? And I've talked about this extensively. Who went to Ghana? Were the worst of the group. They weren't your business mind. They weren't your business creator. The job creators, they were not those ones that went over there. They weren't your successful African Americans or Black Americans who live in the United States. The small pockets of those who have been able to build businesses that went over there. Those ones, they moved. They live in the United States. They weren't going to move to Ghana. What you found are your Section 8 individuals, the ones that rely on government handouts, the ones who were not working, who have dropped off the job market, who are now using social media as they come up, right? Those ones are the ones that went over there. And so these are the grifters. These are your scammers. These are your bad behaviors that you inherited to that country. Yes, these are the ones that you inherited. Now, I equally have to hold Ghanaians responsible because I remember Ghanaians were making Nigerians feel less than that African-Americans chose your country over Nigeria. I remember seeing videos. I remember seeing them come to my comment section to make us feel like we were somehow a horrible country that these people did not choose our country. They chose your country <laughs> over Nigeria. <laughs> I've said it in past videos and I'll say it again. No Nigerian alive is sad or jealous that African Americans chose Ghana. We're happy that you were in Ghana. We're happy you chose Ghana. And now Ghanaians are seeing that this was a bad idea. Because no Ghanaian in his right mind, I tell you this, no Ghanaian in his right mind, whether to live in Ghana or live outside of Ghana, seeing the behavior of people in your country, where your family members and your people live in, tarnishing the image and disrespecting the culture of your country. No Ghanaian in, right, in their right mind will come out and defend that. None. And so here's, here's a question that I have. Here's a question I have. Because there's blame to be, there's blame to go on on both sides, right? So the blame for African Americans or Black Americans is that how dare you, like I'll, I'll echo what our sister says, how dare you go in there with your imperial, imperialist mindset to a place where your ancestors were taken from, to not become the new colonial masters, or at least you think you are, or behave like the same thing you detested in this country that white people did to you or to your ancestors. How dare you go there and then think that you can then inflict the same practice against your own people. So that is my criticism for these people. If you know that you, you didn't want to go to Africa, you stay your, stay your butt in the United States. <laughs> stay your butt here. <laughs> to go to a different country and say, you know, and demand the way it's done in, in the United States is asinine. Right? To the Ghanaians, 
Here's your criticism. First, Ghanaians didn't have structure put in place to easily help African Americans or Black Americans easily transition into that place. That's one. Because if you're going to invite people to your country, right, you would think that you would have structure in place. So it makes it easy for them to transition. So a lot of them are there, right? Not knowing exactly what to do. Of course. Now, how could that have been when Ghana is still trying to figure it out? <laughs> Ghana is a country that is still figuring out how to structure its economy, how to structure its environment. They don't have things in place. And on top of the fact that Ghana invited them at the worst time in the economic situation, Ghana was going through an economic depression in 2019. Ghana's economy was fragile. Ghana was at the brink of bankruptcy. And then you invited people to your country to eat up the limited resources for you. No administration in their right mind would ever do that, to open up their border, to invite immigrants to your country when you know that you're going through an economic turmoil. No anyone, no president, in their right mind will do such thing. But no, leave it to the Ghanaian president, who is a grifter, who was looking to take an opportunity to put Ghana on the map, but in a worse way. But he got the PR, right? For the last couple of years, Ghana has been the talk of town. So he got that PR, but that's all he got. That's all Ghana got. Ghana didn't get an economic boost. Ghana didn't get a financial boost. Ghana didn't get their status or their country, right? In terms of a favorable place for investors to go to, in terms of a, an ideal place to attract a lot of big money and big donors. Ghana didn't get that. All they got is PR. So that is your criticism. Secondly, you invited a people who historically we know that anywhere they go to, they run the place down rather than lift the place up. Let me tell you what I mean by this. African Americans or Black Americans, we know that when they went to Liberia, which is a part that I'm going to bring up to really make my point on this, we know when they went to Liberia to go to Liberia, the exact same thing we're seeing them do in Ghana, which is the imperialist mindset, talking down to the locals, disrespecting the culture, the exact same thing they did in Liberia. They ran the place to the ground. They ran it to the ground. Liberia today is one of the top 10 poorest countries in Africa. One of the top 10 poorest countries in Africa. And this is a place, a, a case, this is a case study of where African Americans went to to settle and they did not, they did not develop the place. They didn't bring value to the place. Liberia today is one of the poorest countries in Africa. You should have known your history on this. So let's bring it to the modern times. When you look at African Americans or Black Americans in their communities in the United States, in a first world country, the most run down communities in the United States are African American communities. When you pick any states in the United States, this is a first world country. We're not talking about third world country right now. This is here in the United States. The most run down communities or African-American communities, they don't build their communities. Most of them, they, the more money they get a little money in their pocket, they go and live in white communities. Most of them, most of them, when they get a little bit of money, they run away from their community and they go and live in white gated communities. They're not builders of communities. These are the ones that you invited over to your country. And now you're wondering why you're going through what you're going through in your country. I've often said it and I'll say it again. That the year of the return did not bring the best of African Americans. Because how could it? How could the best of African Americans, and they are, they are the best of African Americans, by the way. They are job creators who are African Americans in this country. They are business owners who are African Americans in this country. How in the world, in your right mind, did your president think that these ones were going to answer the call and move their resources in an established country like the United States to Ghana? 
because they want to connect back with their ancestral roots. <laughs> How in the world would anyone in their right mind think that that would have happened? <laughs> no, they weren't going to do that. So what you got are people who weren't contributing to this country. They weren't contributing economically. They were more likely to be part of the violence in this country. You mostly got a lot of the people who burnt the streets and their communities down during the Black Lives Matter movement. You got a lot of those people. You got a lot of that behavior in your country. You didn't get the builders, those that have businesses, those that create jobs, those who work hard at their job, went to school and strived and became something of themselves in a very competitive market like the United States, you didn't get those people because there's no way anyone in their right mind to have put in that much time in a country of their birth to succeed and break through was going to now leave all of that behind to go to Africa. You didn't get those. You got grifters. You got scammers. You got people who were not of good intentions. You got people who are using social media as a come up. Those are the ones you got. People who knew that if they committed crimes, the same crimes they're doing over there in the United States, and in, in Ghana, excuse me, if they did the exact same crime in the United States, they were not going to, they were going to be put in jail. You perhaps got a lot of people who already had a lot of records. <laughs> You know, hence why they weren't working in the United States. Move over there. Now, of course, we know that there are African Americans who have been living in Ghana way before the year of the Chocolate. I'm talking about the ones that answered the call. We're not talking about the ones that were there prior to the year of the return. The ones that were there prior to the year of the return went there and they have since established themselves. We're not talking about those. <laughs> the small percentage of those, because we equally have. African Americans living in Nigeria, who have been in Nigeria for 15 years and more. These ones didn't go because of the okie doke or some kind of knee jerk reaction based on the year of return. PR stunts. They were there. They went there for a mission. They went there on, for a purpose. These ones went there with the right intentions and they've been able to succeed either in Nigeria or in Ghana. We're not talking about those people. Those ones are living fine. They're good. We're talking about the yahoos who went there. Because they answered the, the 2019 call. These were your grifters. These were the people you brought to your country. Right? And your government, who was taking advantage of the situation, who got enriched by this, didn't consider the damage, didn't consider the caliber of people that were going to answer the call, didn't consider a lot of factors when he announced that whole thing. That was a PR stunt. Right? To try to put Ghana on the map. But he did that and put Ghana on the map for the wrong reason. You got your PR. Everybody talk about Ghana. You did get that. You got your PR. Because Ghana was really on the map for the last few years. However, how did that benefit your country economically? Because shortly after that happened, Ghana went bankrupt. Ghana is bankrupt today. So how did that benefit your country? Socially, because we're now seeing the issues, social issues that are occurring, where there's a clash of culture, there's a disrespect, a running down of your economy, a running down of the value of your country. We're seeing that because of the people that answer the call, people that you brought to your country. Behavior, by the way, that they wouldn't allow you to do in their own country. They're doing it in your country. So I think it's high time that these things are addressed. And I will be, it'll be interesting to find out, right, how the next administration is going to handle this. Because your government, who, who, who created this mess in your country, will have to clean up this whole thing. Your government will have to clean it up. And it'll be interesting to find out if the next administration will begin asking how many of those so-called Black Americans or African Americans who are in Ghana of actually paying taxes in Ghana. Because if I was a president, I want to know that. Do you understand this? Because if you're going to bring foreigners to your country, you need to know that those foreigners, first of all, are paying taxes. But before they even pay taxes, they need to be legal. Are they legal in that country? Do they have the paperwork? Have they filed the right paperwork? 
or are they just illegal in your country, earning money in your country, and not paying taxes in your country? These are the questions that it would be interesting to find out if the next administration in Ghana will begin looking into this whole thing. Because I can almost guarantee you that a lot of them are evading taxes. How can they pay taxes in their country when they have to pay taxes to their home country? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I bet your president didn't think about this whole thing. That's American citizen, right? As American citizen, as a condition of your citizenship, you're going to have to pay taxes to the United States government, no matter what part of the world you live in. I bet your, your president didn't think about that. So how is it possible that they're paying taxes in Ghana and then paying taxes in the United States? I, as an administration, I would like to know that. Are you paying taxes in my country? That would be a question for your next administration because we already know that the one right here, the one that brought them in, he's closing a blind eye to that. That is, he's not, he knows that they're not. A lot of them, are, at least a lot of them are not, if not most of them. So that would be a question. And I think that most citizens would like to know that because here in the United States, most of we Africans here, we pay taxes. <laughs> I'm an immigrant. I'm an American citizen in this country. I pay taxes. Property taxes, sales tax, income tax, business tax. I pay taxes. <laughs> no country wants any foreigner in their country and they're not putting in their, first, their fair share in that country, none. So you gotta find out, are these ones, on top of the fact that they're behaving badly in your country, on top of all of that, that they bring their bad behavior, they're not even paying taxes in your country. So they join the corruption, right? So that would be an interesting thing to find out how the next administration will handle this, because this is a problem for Ghana, and Ghana is gonna have to deal with this. So the honeymoon stage is over with us, right? No more trying to shame Nigerians. As you can see, we don't really care. We've never cared that they chose your country. We're happy they chose your country. But now you are starting to find out that was a bad idea. Because I'll, I'll be interested to find out which Ghanaian will tell me that they're happy that a foreigner is in a country. And they're not only not paying taxes in your country, possibly, they're also disturbing or corrupting, or behaving badly and killing the value of your country. No citizen in that country will be happy. Right? But that's what you inherited. But anyway, I want to know what your thoughts are on this. I want to know your thoughts on this. Is Ghana going to be able to survive this? Based on the history that we know of African Americans who settled in Africa, and have run the place down, okay? Based on the history we know of them, and based on what we know of their behavior in this country, in their own communities, where they're not building those communities, but they run and they go stay in white communities. Is Ghana gonna really survive this? I don't think so. But it'd be interesting to find out what your thoughts are. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Please leave me a comment, like the video. Subscribe.